This is a good, another video to uh, try and keep this uh, Roden Shorts SMLH working. It's been fine since I've recapped it, but it's developed this fault with it looks like a possibly a power supply problem. Um, the frequency is fine. I've replaced all the capacitors. As you know, there was a shorted capacitor in the tuning um, tuning uh, capacitor gang in here. This is where all the tuning capacitors are. This isn't a synthesized signal generator. It's an early, um, or should I say, a late analog uh, mechanical tuning system with a just a digital readout on the front. So it's not particularly stable, but it's a lovely bit of kit, and it's really easy because it's got a tuning capacity you just wind it to the frequency you want and you can do sweeps m manually you haven't got to mess around with encoders and things like that it's basically been fully recapped apart from a couple of the capacitors down here that are uh, all part of the uh, modulation section and then uh, they were tested all okay all the rf section in here has been recapped um so that should be fine but there's uh developed another problem as as I say where the amplitude is shifting up and down all the time and it takes a while for it when it never settles down initially it's okay when you first turn it on it seems fine so set warms up it goes into this oscillation now I noticed this last year um, and I got away with it by turning the, the plus 15 volt rail down but as you can see here the amplitude is shifting up and down and this is AM modulation this is um, percentage of modulation on AM and you can see it's between 92 and 94 um, percent but that will actually if you put that on the scope you see the amplitude of the uh, signal going up and down at the same rate so what I'm going to try and do is um, I'm going to try and find out exactly what's gone wrong uh, or what's what's causing it and I'm, I'm pretty confident it is the power supply problem so I need to go through the all the rails to check um, they are the, the, the unit is regulating properly I don't think it's in current limit, it shouldn't be in current limit because there's, you know, it's been all recapped, there shouldn't be any excessive current being drawn through the unit. Um, but if it is on the verge of current limit, I might have to have a look at the power supply to see if I can reduce the, uh, or increase the current limit to get this thing to stabilise. So, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to find a decent earth, which is basically the chassis, and let's have a look through and see what we can find. So we've got the rails coming out of this power supply here, this is a linear power supply. Um, and all that they feed down through these cables and it's distributed through the motherboard to various sections including the RF board, uh, the multiplier switching down here and various other stages. So let's just go through the power supply and just have a quick look to see what we've got. So let's look at our first rail which should be a plus 12. Okay and that's pretty stable about 10 millivolts of shift but that's okay 12.45 the next rail now the 79 volt rail is the unregulated supply for the power amplifier and that's all that supply does is feed to the uh, the power amplifier when it's enabled so at the present time there's no load on that 75 volts so that's uh, out of the question it's not going to be a problem with the 75 volts anyway and it's stable as you can see whoops that's just blown the fuse. So that's not a good start. Ah, this is the trouble with these power supplies, you have to be very careful because it's very easy to uh, short something out. So now I've got to pull the main fuse out and just hope it hasn't damaged the bloody power supply. So let's get a screwdriver, put the main fuse out. Long time since I've done that. Let's get this fuse out. The good thing about, well, I suppose the half good thing about shorting something like this is that it's only going to damage the power supply. Well, it hasn't actually blown the main fuse, which is a bit of a just bit of a shame. So what did I short out? I shorted the plus five out. So this probably blown the main chip for the plus five I hope not let's pop the fuse back in it might have overcurrent protection but I'm not entirely sure so let's repair it again oh the display is all dim that's on the good side so disconnect the power supply from the board 
and check the rails again. So I've obviously now short, shorting the plus five to the, so what have I done? Shorted the plus five to, it looks like I shorted the plus 70, how oh, great. So this might have done some damage. So let's just have a quick look. See what voltage we've got on our supply. Twelve volts is a bit low. Plus seventy, non existent, which is probably because I've hopefully blown that. I put an external fuse in there to protect the seventy five volts. Don't think that's blown either. Five volts is low. 23 volts is good, plus 15 is good, and minus 15 is good, so I've lost the 5 volt rail. So what I need to do now is have a look at the circuit diagram and see what would that would have done if I sh shorted the... I think what I've probably done is I've blown the... Uh, one of the chips in the... Uh, circuit board so let's have a look here's the plus 70 volt rail which is an unregulated basically a raw supply that comes in if I short that to 24 volts I would have taken this LM340 probably out so that's probably the main problem the 5 volts is also missing So I'm trying to work out what I shorted out and it gives us a good clue. So the power supply's got to come apart, so that's uh, well it's going to probably have to come apart anyway because of the, the problem with the uh, pulsing load. So let's grab a torch and have a look. Looks Yeah, so it looks like I shorted the plus 12 to the plus 70. <sighs> that's not good because the plus tw not only the plus 70 is a higher voltage rail but it's also got this is the rail here it's also a it's interesting actually it doesn't look like this is the same power supply because oh no sorry wrong circuit diagram okay it's an, yes an unregulated supply out of the so the 70 volts that should still be there if the 70 volts isn't there um, it means I've blown a diode or it's this is the fuse hopefully the mains fuse on the uh, on the input of the unit at the back on the back panel which looked okay as you can see the rails are up so the the primary of the transformer is okay so it could be that but let's just have a look again at the 70 volt rail and just make sure that that is still there Plus 12 is there. Looks like the plus we lost a 70 volt rail, which is unusual. Oh, of course, it is. I've got the fuse out. Come on, get your act together. Okay, let's have a look at this fuse just to see if that's blown. Okay. That's fine, so that put the 70 volt fuse back in. Check it again. We've got 14 volts on the that's the plus 12, so that's good. It does actually look like I've lost the 70 volt rail. <coughs> so that would be a diode blown. I hope not. I 
we've got five volts now. Twenty three volts is good. So it almost looks like all the rails have come back. Oh, there's a short circuit protection on this. It's just recovered. Just can't see the, the plus seventy anymore. No, I have no plus seventy rail. Which is very odd because that is just straight out of a bridge rectifier. So I wonder if I'm gonna blow one of these diodes. So the next step will be to take the whole thing apart and uh, try and work out what I've done. This is the trouble with these very closely connected links. You only have to slip and you put a short circuit on it and blow the thing up. Luckily, as I say, it's on the uh, power supply section, so it should be fairly easy to fix. But uh, the next video will be get the power supply out and try and work out what's gone wrong with that. Anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully the next stage will be fixing the power supply.